Now let's move on to cell surface membrane. Okay, so the cell surface membrane, let's see if I can find it here. Okay, the cell surface membrane, okay, here it is. It's called the plasma membrane, but it's also known as the cell surface membrane. It's pretty much the bodyguard in an animal cell, so it controls what's let in and out by these things called protein carriers or transport carriers. So it's made up of this thing called a lipid bilayer, which you will learn again in A2. I keep saying that, but it's true. You'll learn about these things in A2 in more detail. And the main function is it controls substance exchange. It's around 7 nanometers, so it's super thin. And it's they describe it as a trilemar because you can see it in a diagram as two dark stained lines. So... If you have a cell diagram, which you will come across, if you see the two dark stained lines, that's the cell surface memory, which obviously outlines the cell. Don't just do any random line. And it's partially permeable. The next thing which we have is the microvilli. Now, the microvilli are just these finger-like extensions. I guess they're, if you want to describe it more specifically, it's just the extension of the cell surface membrane. And it has the same function as the cristae, as I mentioned earlier. It increases surface area for reactions and therefore it increases efficiency. And we have microvilli up next, which are these fuzzy little things that you see here. And the microvilli's function is the same as the cristae's function, I guess. It increases surface area for reactions, and they're known as finger-like projections. So they increase surface area, therefore increase efficiency. So for example, the cell, if the cell were to line your gut, it would have more microvilli so that more food can be absorbed. Alright, so again, it's a very simple concept. We're almost done, guys, I promise. Now what we have is something called, oh, where'd that go? Here we go. Something called microtubules, and you can't see that on this diagram, mainly because it's very small, but microtubules make up centrioles, which I'll cover on the next slide. So what is a microtubule? Microtubule is long, rigid, hollow tubes located in the cytoplasm, and they're very small. They're only about 25 nanometers in diameter, and what they're made up of is actin and intermediate filaments. And why is it important? It's why are microtubules important? It makes up the cytoskeleton, which determines the shape of the cell. So here, I've summarized the function of microtubule. It is structural support, so as I said, the cytoskeleton, and there's transport. So vesicles and organelles can be moved along the microtubule. And when I say cell division, the centrioles, so microtubules make up centrioles, and these centrioles form these things called spindle fibers in which chromosomes line up during nuclear division. Speaking of centrioles, here they are, centrioles and centrosomes. They produce spindle fiber during cell division, which you will cover in AS actually during your cell division topic. Now to break it down and make it simple, two centrioles makes one centrosome. And each centriole contains, contains nine triplets of microtubules. Oh, that's a mouthful. So here, as I said, you can see centriole but you can't see a microtubule, so here you can see a microtubule triplet. Uh, so very small things. And finally, guys, we made it to plant cell structure. It means we're almost done and almost there. Now, what do plant cells have? Most of these things are pretty much what we have covered, except for chloroplast and large permanent vacuole and cell wall. Now these are the three things that a plant cell has which an animal cell doesn't have. And things which I mentioned such as centrioles and micro microvilli, plants don't have those. So let's go ahead and check out chloroplasts. So here is a more detailed structure of a chloroplast. <coughs> Excuse me. So, chloroplast, again, is very well suited for its structure, just like the mitochondrion. And again, just like the mitochondrion and the nucleus, it is a double membrane. Now, the chloroplast function, 
the thing that you need to remember, which is most important, it is the site of photosynthesis. The rough size is around 3 to 10 micrometers, so you can see it pretty clearly with an electron um, microscope. Now, thylakoids are these disks here. And thylakoids, so stacking thylakoids makes up this thing called grana, okay? So this grana or granum, aka a stack of thylakoids, they contain pigments which absorb light and electron carriers. So during photosynthesis, you need to absorb light. So different pigments absorb different frequencies of light, and they're all located in here. So this is where the main magic happens in photosynthesis. And there will be other things such as lipid droplets and starch grains, which will be like little dark circles and diagrams, which is not on this diagram, but it will be. So if you see dark circles in chloroplasts, you can probably guess and say that they're either lipid droplets or starch grains and then this the fluid inside so aka I guess you could say the cytoplasm of the chloroplast is known as the stroma that is the interior fluid in the chloroplast and as I mentioned it's very well suited for its structure so just like the mitochondria and it has a lot of enzymes and things like that and also just like the mitochondria Scientists believe that chloroplasts were independent creatures until our, the plant cells colonized it in this case because animal cells don't have chloroplasts because they have 70S ribosomes. So here, let me just point out on the diagram, the chloroplast is here, this little thing right here. And now we have two more organelles, I guess, to cover. The first one is the cell wall. Animal cells do not have cell walls we only have a cell membrane the cell walls function is to protect the plant the cell i mean the plant yeah i guess the plant but more importantly the cell so there's the cell wall which if i can find here the cell wall and then there is the inner membrane and then there's the cytoplasm so the cell wall is a protective barrier and more importantly, also, it's used for structure and support for the cell because it controls the shape of the cell when water enters and leaves the cell. It makes sure the cell doesn't get too full and that it doesn't burst. So it maintains the shape of the cell. And another thing is a large vacuole. So it provides structural support. The large vacuole animal cells do not have. Our vacuole is temporary. It shrinks and it leaves depending on how much water we have in our system. But a plant cell will always have a vacuole in its cell, no matter whether it's shrinked or not, but there will always be a vacuole present. And its job is to provide structural support, support and growth, storage, waste disposal, and protection. So numerous functions there. And that is it, you guys. We have covered most, actually all of the organelles which you need to know for your exam. Now let's check out the summary point. The first summary point it distinguishes between prokaryotic and eukaryotic features. It is a table summary. I'll just give you a second to note it. Good, now that you've print screened it, take this table down and memorize it. It literally summarizes what I've been talking about. And then moving on to summary point two, I'll give you a second to screenshot each um, slide. So that is summary point two. It basically lists all the organelles which we have discussed about and tells you whether it's in an animal or plant cell or in a prokaryotic cell. It gives you the function and it also gives you a description. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please, you know, let us know down below. If you have any questions, please do comment it down below. We'll do our best to answer your questions. And thank you guys so much for watching. See you.